if anybody has any questions, I can certainly type in the little chat box up there. John moderates during that time, lets me know if there's any problems. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to part three of our business growth series. Uh, what we try to cover here are various topics related to uh, business development, utilization of virtual business cards, and any kind of mobile marketing and future mobile marketing or mobile communication. And today's part three is focused on lead generation. How do we use mobile as a great lead capture tool? How do we use it, our virtual business cards or programs for all different kinds of businesses to capture new business? What's the value of acquiring new business? Why should we invest in business growth? All of those kinds of things. And so uh, pretty good one here today. I'm excited to be able to share it with you. I'm excited to be able to be here. Uh, we know that the average person looks at their phone 150 times a day. We've looked at this slide before, and we know that people open up text messages more than they open up emails. Uh, the click-through rates, the timeliness of it are all far better um, through a text message than through any other type of communication that you could possibly use. But is that enough to be able to talk somebody into doing mobile-first strategies? And oftentimes the data alone isn't even enough, although this to me, I would say, you know, the first time you showed me this slide, the, the, which is the first time I looked at this kind of data was like six or seven years ago, and I said, man, this is where it's at. I got to figure out how to leverage this to my benefit, and I built a company around it, right? So um, I, what we're going to be talking about today in terms of lead generation, how does it work for direct sales forces, how does it work for people that are really out there in the street seeing people face-to-face -face at events, you know, during their daily life, on calls, whatever the case may be. Website, content marketing, social marketing, email marketing, direct mail, display marketing, all of those kinds of things. And, you know, just a little, this is a little side note, but any CTA, any call to action, it has to stand out, clearly define what you want your lead to do, create urgency, be positioned in a prominent area, and it should be mobile first, right? So um, I talk a lot about finesse and offers, the finesse required to get somebody to opt in. I'm on the phone today, this morning, a 9 o'clock call, with someone that has uh, been working with us over the course of the last few years. And he said, yeah, you know, we put something on there that says, you know, Texas Word to this short code to get more information. And I'm like, why would you ever say that? You know, that's just not, does that call to action stand out? Is that really, does that create urgency for the individual? Um, you know, where did you position that call to action? Is that the finesse required to get someone to engage with you, to capture their mobile number? Because that's the most vital piece of information that we could ever have. And, you know, had to, so constantly we have to be thinking about this with anybody that we're talking to. So, What's the value of a new customer for any business? I'm going to show you just a quick calculation and how this is just repositioning the thought, uh, repositioning this um, in, in the mind of your potential buyer if you're reselling this technology, or if you're a business yourself and you're thinking about investing in business growth, right, just your own business growth. How do you... Uh, how do you come up with an equation that makes sense? We constantly at our company talk about what we're investing in customer growth versus the lifetime value of the new customer that we bring in and is that a scalable model that will continually increase revenues. The great thing about it, I was just doing some reading about lead generation and I'll share some of those links with you. John actually put some of those together for me uh, leading up to this conference. but. Um, you know, some of the reading, I was reading about how so many businesses are going to monthly residual models for uh, selling to their customers because we want that monthly recurring growth. And if I can continue to add more and more people onto my uh, business that pay me every single month, then it just builds this, you know, it can constantly build on itself. And then it's very easy to run models on what the cost of a new customer, what is my... Um, you know, what is it, what's my investment to go out and reach out to new customers? How many leads do I get out of that? How many leads do I convert into a new customer? And then what's the lifetime that they, you know, that they stay with me and uh, that kind of thing. So we'll just use a simple salon as, as a model here. 
So if a customer comes in and buys a haircut from a salon and they continue and they stay on and they buy, you know, once a month for, every, for the next 10 years, uh, that doesn't even take into consideration. Do they refer business to you? Do they talk about you on social media if you get a, get a chance to? Does that one individual help bring in three more individuals, which if it's done right, a lot of times it can. And we'll talk about some of those lead generation and lead acquisition strategies in this in this call as it goes on. So um, what what do you invest in to get that one person, right? Well, let's talk about the revenue received from that one individual. This is a new customer, right? So average haircut, service, this works for any business. We're not just talking about haircut, but this is just to put it in perspective. The average haircut or service may be $35, right? $35 times once a month over the next uh, 10 years is 120 visits or a total of $4,200 of gross future revenue that's brought in off of one individual. Again, not counting did they refer somebody to you, which uh, loyal customers will refer to people over the course of a lifetime of them being in, in business with you. So one new customer, you could easily say, equals three new customers, okay? Um, if, they, if you service them well, right? And that's, that's a key, but that's, that's totally different. That's how well do you service your customers. One new customer could equal three. But $35 times 120 visits equals $4,200 of the, what's, that's the lifetime value of this customer. That's what we're saying it is. We might be able to call it three times that. <clears throat> now, what's the investment to get that one individual person? Is it one targeted direct mail piece? a display, like an outdoor display or a digital display, or <clears throat> a trade show booth, um, a PPC campaign, something that uh, a business invests in to be able to uh, let people know that they're, that they're in business, that they have what these people are looking for. Because at any given time, any given time, two out of 100 people are actively looking for what you have to offer. And if you happen to be right in front of them at the time that they're looking, they're uh, potentially gonna buy from you. You'll be one of the two or three that they're gonna decide between when they are actively looking, whether that's you know buying tires, whether that's buying mobile marketing services, buying a haircut. So um, whatever vehicle that you use and invest in to get in front of people, you optimize that with mobile, and we'll talk about how to do that later on in this a little bit more. And then you lead capture those people and deliver more information. I did those in air quotes. But deliver a video, deliver a coupon, deliver something of great value to that person to show your credibility. And you've got a high likelihood of closing them as a new customer. Now, let me break this down as simply as I can. If you walked into any business today and said, look, one new customer that buys from you once a month over the course of the next three years is worth this amount of money to you. And you would do that quick math based on how much money they average on a per customer basis, right? Uh, they come in and visit you once a month. That value, let's just call it $4,200. Now, you can turn around right now and invest $1,000 in this piece of marketing, add mobile into the middle of it, Capture those leads that come across, or you tell them you're already investing in radio because I heard your radio spot. You're already investing in the booth that you're going to be in at the, at the fair. You're already investing in these print campaigns that I get in the mail. But now you can mobilize it, add one mobile engagement right to the center of it, capture those leads, deliver an a, a engagement to them, and <clears throat> drive more of these individual people that will buy from you over the course of time, and each one of those is worth potentially $4,200, maybe even refer a few people and be worth as much as $10,000. Is the investment to increase these number of people worth a $100 setup fee and $39 a month to be able to have mobile programs to build databases of people that will help you acquire more new customers? What if I could help you build five new customers by doing everything that you're doing now, you're doing everything the same as you're doing right now, but you're gonna add five new customers every month just because you mobilize the campaigns that you're currently doing. The investment to do that, again, $100 setup fee, $39 a month, and I'm just throwing out numbers, 
$39 a month. If you bring in one new customer in the next 12 months, that more than pays for it. That's a great investment. That's about a two to one investment. But five people times, uh, five people a month times the lifetime value of each person times 12 months means you could bring in a quarter of, of a million dollars of increased future revenue for an investment of $100 and $39 a month. Would that help you bring on a new customer? You see, positioning new customer growth and valuing the lifetime value of a customer is a very, very powerful tool as far as repositioning the mindset of a potential buyer or potential investor. These are investors. When you talk to people about investing in growth of their own business, investing in technology that will help them grow their business, that's a completely different position than saying, do you want to buy this tool? Do you want to buy this tool because I have these stats that show that more people open up text messages than anything else? Are people going to buy because of this? Or are people going to buy because of the lifetime value of a customer and the inexpensive investment to bring on those new customers and enhance the lead generation strategies that they're already doing? The understanding holistically of the lifetime value of customers and new acquisition growth, new customer acquisition growth, will help anybody decide that they need to invest in, and it is an investment, because you take that investment and then you turn it into more money. And I have frequently used the analogy of, John, would you pull $5 out of your wallet right now if I was going to slap $500 of business on the table right back to you and spend $500 in your location over the next 12 months? Would you do that? That's exactly what this is. It's not, it doesn't cost you anything. This builds your business, helps you grow, helps you bring on new customers, and is the single best investment that anybody could ever make in anything, investing in your own business. So let's talk about some real specifics. So here's my virtual business card. There's an actual screenshot of it. Um, how do I use it for lead generation? Well, it doesn't matter if somebody's, you know, when I talk about direct sales, I'm not, just, I'm not talking about multi-level marketing necessarily, but those are direct sales people as well. Direct sales is anybody that is, you know, that goes to events, that goes to networking events, that talks to people face-to-face -face or talks to people over the phone. And, you know, they go to trade shows, it's in-person distribution. My virtual business card, um, the one our CEO has on his phone and other people in our organization, when they're talking to an individual person about what we do, they give them a virtual business card. The person types their mobile number in the phone and they get back a text message that has a link in it to our website and other things like that. The beauty of this is start to think about anybody, any business out there. And I was uh, talking to one of my radio station partners yesterday about a car dealership group that they work with. And they bring on new car dealer uh, salespeople all the time. And then it takes a while to get their business cards and hand somebody a business card, doesn't get any data, and they never look at the business card anyway. They certainly never make it to the website. But when they hand somebody a virtual business card, which can be created in about two minutes, when they hand that person a virtual business card, that information immediately goes to their phone. They can click the link. It shows instant credibility and it helps build the value of that of the business because it makes that business much more credible. You think about um, direct sales companies, people with big sales forces, um, they go out, and even yourself. Have you ever gone out and tried to talk to somebody about your business because you ran into them at the store? And you said, you know, you really should check out my website or whatever. And they're like, okay. But maybe your website's not even completely done or you don't have a business card to hand them and they're never going to make it there. With this tool, this is why it helps lead generation and new customer acquisition is because I hand the information right to their phone and now they're looking at the information. I tell them to click the link and now they're watching my video and they're looking at what I want to talk to them about. We call this a conversation extender because now they've got that information on their phone. I'm telling them to click it while they're right in front of me. They're looking at my products or they're looking at my services or they're watching my video 
and now they are uh, they they are much more credible. I've got something to back up what I'm saying. I've got um, I'm able to extend the conversation to go more deeply. I'm able to start asking them questions, which is the most vital point of the sales cycle, and I'm able to see what their needs are, and that I'm able to set a meeting from that from that spot. The second, uh, this all virtual business cards are able to link to anything else that we want. Now, when you talk about lead generation strategies, oh, by the way, I get a text message with their phone number. I can easily turn around and save that uh, phone number and make sure that I give them a call later or whatever. Um, when, but this can link this button down here can link anywhere I want it to go. Maybe it's something that I just want to show my prospects. In my circumstances, I link it right to my example demo apps, which has all the different industries on it. And I can stand there while I'm talking to somebody and I find out that they, you know, work in the entertainment industry or whatever. Then I go down to that tab and I click it and I have them type their mobile number in there. And then they see an example that fits their industry. And I can capture that information uh, for that individual and know which database that he went into. Now, when I get a lead notification via text or email, I can send an email to myself with additional notes and, and, and information. So I've got their mobile phone number. I can forward that right to my email, and I can type in, this is John Thompson. He's you know, CEO of in, you know, in whatever the, his company name is, and <clears throat> I can put some notes about what we talked about. And then when I eventually get back to my desktop computer, I can put that, load that into my CRM tool, and I've got his mobile number opted in. I've got his mobile phone number, and now I can add in, you know, maybe I've got his business card. I can add his email in. And now I can you know, uh, start following up with him. I could also, uh, off of any of my demos, I could set up a autoresponder if I wanted to. So, for instance, let's say that we're going to a trade show, and at that trade show, I'm going to be meeting, uh, you know, 150 people walking by my booth every single day, and I'm going to be handing them information from my virtual business card or from a tablet. I very well may set up a separate virtual business card that is for all of these leads. Because I want all of these leads to get a message right there when they walk by my booth, but I want them to get another message two and a half hours later that says X, Y, Z, and I want them to get another message the following day, and I want to give them another message two weeks later and one a month after that. Um, I can preset all those up with an autoresponder, connect that to my virtual business card, and this is, you'd have to do this custom, but you have the ability to do that. And then all of those people go into a different database. Even if you don't have the full application and all you have is a virtual business card, you could certainly have another virtual business card that is just for lead capture opportunities. And then um, you know, set up autoresponders, a, a different database for those different events so that you can track who those events were. Because you know, for us, we may go to a nightclub trade show and then we might turn around and go to a restaurant trade show, and we might turn around and go to some other trade show. We're going to set up different virtual business cards and different autoresponders for each one of those, right? Another example of how people can use different databases is they set up different uh, databases actually on the same virtual business card, which can be done custom, and this is how we do it for network marketing companies. So a network marketing company virtual business card has one form for one activity, in a different form for another activity. Sometimes they maybe even have a third form that puts people into a different database. In the, in the Avon uh, category, they, talk, they deliver products to people when they're talking to them about their products. But when they're talking to them about the opportunity to build a business and to make extra money, then they have a second lead capture form, and that delivers different information, of course. And so this is just another strategy in how to develop different databases for lead generation, mobile first strategies. <clears throat> Here is uh, an example of people that uh, they have web traffic, people go to their site, um, they uh, tell people when they get to the site, hey, you want a coupon? Here, you can print it. The problem is a lot of people are looking at this on their tablet slash their mobile phone even if they're looking at it from their uh, home computer, when, which is where I often will go and look for a coupon, I can't print this coupon from my house. I don't have a network printer at my house. I mean, who prints anything anymore? Instead, teach people to mobilize that, right? 
save the paper and ink, send the coupon right to your phone. Now they type their mobile number in, instantly they get a text message with that coupon right to their phone. But now you've done one other very important thing. Out of the 200 people printing off uh, uh, coupons off of your website on a monthly basis, now you've got 50 of them that enter your database and now you can drive additional transactions from them. We would call those leads. Those are leads and now we can remarket to those leads and we can capture them in the future. Here's another example. Um, Northern Trust might be uh, a company that, um, you know, any, I mean, I'm talking about insurance or investment banking or um, real estate or anybody that, you know, spends money to drive traffic to their site. Do they have an engaging, interesting mobile engagement that is uh, upfront, a very uh, great call to action? What are these people looking for that are searching here? Are they wanting wealth and savings tips? Then that should be the uh, biggest call to action. Some places it's going to be they're looking for a coupon. Some places it might be they, look, they want the listing sent right to their phone uh, for new foreclosures. Everybody is driving traffic that has a different um, uh, a different interest. Figure out what that interest is and make that engagement the most um, upfront, centered, um, greatest call to action with some finesse and put it right into the center of the website. Now people type their mobile number in, get the tips sent right to their phone. Other people have a lot of other types of forms, whether you're registering for the 5K event for the nonprofit, those would be great people to call because this is what their form looks like today. Whether you're talking to big companies that you know have uh, 100 people on staff and do massive marketing campaigns, this is what their forms look like today. First name, last name, work email, job function, company name. What's missing? That mobile phone number field, right? And you can certainly send a, a one-time reminder to somebody without by just putting message and data rates may apply and send them a one-time text message, but not opt them in for future campaigns. And then you'll get more people to your webinar because you sent a text message out prior to the webinar starting. But even more powerful is to l actually let them know by entering their mobile number, you agree to receive reminders about the webinar as well as future updates. Um, it might not be a webinar. It might be you know, to receive marketing automation tips. Uh, it might be to receive additional coupons in the future. Whatever a business, and you could look up every single business in your market today, and every one of them has some type of form on their website, and one out of a thousand of them is capturing a mobile number and using it for future marketing. That means there's 999 opportunities out of a thousand out there to go and show them this and say, this is what you're missing. And now you can remarket to those people from their mobile device and then you can convert more of those people into your database. A question just came up, can you do this with a web widget? You can do this with a web widget, but a lot of people have their own custom forms, and all they do is use a very simple API call that you can provide them, and uh, the mobile number they type in there hits our API in their marketing center and instantly sends them the text message response from the keyword or mobile coupon. Um, so this is easy to set up. You can email support at avidmobile.com if you don't know how to do this. Um, so, you know, and again, these slides will be available to anybody inside the uh, reseller content section or if you email support and ask about it. Content marketing. Content marketing is, I, I spent some time talking about that in seminar one when I was talking about you know, the biggest challenge that marketers face today in driving traffic, getting better SEO rankings, a lot of people are generating content. They're writing blogs, they are, um, you know, they're putting out new information, they're doing webinars, they're doing uh, new downloadable PDFs on different topics, but they have trouble driving people to actually view that content. But it also works the other, but they, uh, it also works the other direction. Are people using the content to uh, have a clear call to action to be able to drive database building? Because it, it needs to work both directions. You may only have somebody hit your website one time in their entire lifetime. There's so, uh, I was just reading an article actually this morning, totally different topic, but it was talking about, and I, I can't, I probably won't get the word right, but it's like 
desensitization, but it's also, it's like anytime I'm searching for something, new information, new stats, a new business, I want a better price on whatever it is, I am flooded with so many uh, things that I could possibly read, so many different blogs, so many different websites, um, uh, you know, between the beginning of time in 2013, there was some, you know, X amount of content created in the entire world, worldwide. And now we create that much content every two days. And, and it's available, readily available online. And so now our attention spans are very short. When somebody hits your website, your blog, the content that you produced, the booth that you went by in a trade show, one time, that may be the last time you ever see that person. If you don't have a clear engagement to get them to, uh, and capture that data, to get them back later, or to capture their mobile phone number so you can call them back later, then you're not doing your job. Because every lead that I capture, I'm then going to convert X amount of percentage of them, and then that they will become a customer, and then the lifetime value of that customer is gonna be far greater than what it costs me to be able to add mobile engagements into whatever it is. A blog might say, or a piece of content, or an article we write, or a radio spot might say, um, text this word to this phone number. And it might say that right in the center, and it's gonna be the biggest and cleanest call to action that there is. Sometimes it might just be, you know, get your free trial today, or see more, uh, see a video about what this is really about, you know, get the behind the scenes look at it. And when they click that, then it takes them to, uh, a, to uh, a form where they can fill out additional information. And when they fill out that information, we capture that information, and then that allows us to remarket to them. Here's an example of social. So um, I, put, I put this out today. Just built a cool demo for a new potential client I'm meeting with today, Pizza Ranch. Each of their clients walk in and can type their mobile number and tablet and instantly receive a coupon. Click here and try out the demo yourself. When people click that link, then it takes them right to uh, this page where they can type their mobile number right in there and they can uh, see the coupon themselves. The second text message that these people get back when they try this out is actually a social engagement to start a social conversation. So I'm gonna share this one with you guys. If you wanna click over real quick, I'll paste it right here into the chat. And you guys can click that link and you can try out the demo real quick. Um, if you just click that link in the chat, I'll take you right to this page, type your mobile number in, hit submit and send me the coupon. We can take a look at the second text message that you get back. Uh, the second text message you get back has a social engagement piece to it and um, automatically drives some percentage of social behavior. I'll talk more about why that's important here in just a second. Um, so again, the content that I'm creating, whether it's blogs, whether those blogs link to a call to have a call to action that's clear and that I think is what the potential readers might want, and it links them right to a page where I'm gonna capture data. That way I can remark to those people. If I'm gonna produce content on social media, I might have a click here and try it yourself, or I might say text Pizza Ranch to 63975 from your mobile phone, right, which would also work. I'm going to, whatever I do, I am going to have an engagement in my content to capture data. And then I'm gonna remarket my new content to those individuals and drive transactions. I'm going to, when somebody, I post something, uh, I may, set up a different keyword for each individual uh, blog, for each individual social post. I might, um, because, and I uh, for definitely for each event I go to, because when I go to that event, I want to get a lead notification and know that it came from this blog that was about restaurants. Because then when I follow up with that person, because I got a text message with their phone number, or my sales team follows up with them, I know it came from the restaurant promotion. Or if it's, a, if it's content that's about, you know, how manufacturing can use mobile to gr grow new business. 
and I get an engagement off that blog because somebody texted in or hit a form and I get a lead note notification to my email, then I know I need to follow up with them specifically about manufacturing. And I put those people in a different database. And now as you, when you talk about inbound and outbound marketing, that's my inbound marketing strategy. My outbound marketing strategy now is to send different information to those different people that are in my different databases that came to me based on different types of content and then send messages that make sense based on the content they originally received from me. If it's manufacturing, send out stuff about manufacturing. If it's restaurants, send out stuff about restaurants. I'm talking about my business, but you need to apply this to whatever business that you're talking to. Many businesses, like for instance, one of my clients is Jana King International. They've got their uh, different uh, businesses broken down into different categories of businesses. They work with hospitals, they work with event uh, places, they work with um, manufacturing places. So they can build databases that are different based on each of those different industries as well. And then they can remarket to those people with content that makes sense for those businesses. And you can do that by building different databases, by creation of different keywords, by creation of different campaigns. And so uh, that's just something to keep in mind. Inbound outbound marketing strategies. One of the other things that's kind of a kind of a key word right now, uh, kind of a kind of a go-to word, is talking about marketing automation. There's a lot of uh, talk about marketing automation. Um, you know, uh, marketing automation is like when somebody, you know, an inbound lead comes in, what do you do with that lead? And do you have any automation to remarket to that lead? Well, that's what autoresponders are for. That's what different databases for different types of campaigns are for. And so this is another form of marketing automation. Again, I had a conversation with, and that, this, is, this is marketing speak. Do we take marketing speak to the business owner? Absolutely not. What kind of speak do we take to the marketing owner? <laughs> we take, or to the business owner? We take the investment in revenue growth and business and new customer acquisition growth. That's what we talk about. If we're talking to a CMO, we may talk about marketing automation or things like that. Absolutely. I saw a lot of, I saw some dollar signs pop up. That's what we talk about with a, with a business owner. Okay. So, um, delivering a social engagement right to somebody's phone is obviously an enhancement to events. It's the opportunity to drive engagement, encourage, encourage engagement, drive conversation. There's a lot of talk about having a conversation on social media. One of the problems with anything is that when I make a social media post like I did today, then, you know, nobody's really going to see this, by the way. You know, I've got 1,400 likes and uh, whatever, you know. I can't, I mean, I'm, nobody's going to see this, really. I mean, I'm, I'm, like 12 people are going to see this. And that's going to be like my mom and my girlfriend, right, and John. John's going to see it. That's it. Nobody else is. Unless I pay Facebook and they boost it or whatever, which I might, you know, I might do. But, because, but the only reason I would do it is because it's got an engagement that I could lead capture off of it. So then I could take and get notified of each of those people, and then I could, follow, I could have my sales team follow up with them by phone. That would be a reason to boost my post. That's, that's a legitimate reason. Um, if I've got a clear engagement in the center of it. Now think of other businesses. My business is not the type that it probably makes a whole lot of sense to boost my post, at least in terms of locally, because I'm not necessarily after local businesses. I mean, sure, there's local business. I mean, Kansas City is a huge, you know, huge city. It's got plenty of businesses that might be interested in, uh, you know, what we have to offer. But the, um, <clears throat> you know, I boosting my post is not as big of a deal as now think any of the local restaurants that you might work with, any of the local retailers. It, what if they put a post in here that was like, get this instant coupon right on your phone, click here. Would that be worth it to boost it? Well, now you start talking about investment. It's a combination of two things, right? Mobile doesn't work standing alone. Mobile works when you take it and you put it into the center call to action of your social media, you boost the post, you invest the $200 to boost that post to a whole bunch of local people, and the center out of it is mobile call to action, you get 50 people to get your coupon because you boosted the post. 50 doesn't sound like very much, but out of those 50 people, 10 people actually walk in the door and buy from you. Those, out of those 10 people, five of them buy from you for the next five years. We just brought in five new customers that lifetime value is $4,000 a piece. $4,000 a piece, 
times five people is $20,000. What did it cost you? It didn't cost you anything. The investment was, whatever it, the investment was to get mobile marketing from you, and the investment was whatever it took to boost that post. Now, is that a strategy that you could take to somebody today? Just that right there, this one slide, except not this one because this shows me and this is a you know, bad example. But you could put your own example together and show somebody this. Is that an example of something that would be powerful? What's the cost? The cost is nothing. The investment is, that, and is the 250 bucks to get $20,000 of growth in your overall enterprise. New customer acquisition. How many times would you want to do this? I would do it three times a month, five times a month. I would do this as often as I possibly could as long as I was getting five new, 10 new customers in the door and five the, the buff for me on a continual basis because that would be the best type of marketing that I could ever possibly do. Best investment I could ever make. I didn't see any like hell yeahs coming off of the chat line, but I really felt like I was really, really some good stuff there. I don't know. Some of you know about incentivized social sharing. Oh, 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 I left off a piece. So, you know, starting a conversation is, you know, there's multiple pieces of it. When I post something on social media, nobody sees it. I can boost it, yes, and there's, a, there's reason and rationale behind potentially paying Facebook to boost it to my local market or wherever I want to have it shown. But when I say something on social media, in general, a lot of times it's not seen. However, if I, like that text message example that was sent from, um, from Pizza Ranch, somebody comes into my venue, they type their mobile number in, and they get a text message back with a coupon, and they get a second text message back that says, hey, if you write something, if you send a, take a picture right now inside of our Pizza Ranch, post a picture to our wall, and say, you know, say something about us, you'll be entered for a chance to win X, Y, Z. Now, when, if, if one person a day does that, all of their friends see that interaction with my company. And now, all of a sudden, my Facebook wall is being shown to thousands of other people that otherwise would never have seen it, that I, can, I simply cannot reach alone. You see, it's these people, when they interact with me, when they post something on my wall, when they take a picture and put it on my wall, then all of their friends see that. When I post something, nobody sees it unless I pay for it. If they post something on my wall, everybody sees it. A mobile first strategy is one where I can take and have an engagement at an event, at a, at when I'm at a speaking engagement, when I'm in front of somebody, and then the text message itself post uh, you know, my talk. So I have a talk, I'm speaking in front of 200 people. And when I'm done, I say, write, uh, you know, tell me, ask me a question. Tell me your thoughts. Write it on my social, uh, write it on my Facebook wall right now. Click here. And I send that to them via text. Now they can click the link in it, go right to my Facebook wall, write something down. And now all of their friends see that. And I'm exposed to countless people that I never would have been exposed to before. When you talk about local marketing for businesses, that is an incredible way to get, you know, quote unquote, free marketing uh, in that case. It's also starting a conversation. It's having people talk back and forth. When you talk about churches or nonprofits, just imagine how powerful. And, and, and every one of you in your city where you work, there's people running 5Ks. There's something every weekend with, a, you know, the the warrior dash or the, you know, paint runs or whatever. Nobody has the tablet at the registration table and having everybody type their mobile number in. And nobody is saying, uh, as soon as the event is over, sending a text message out to all those people that all took pictures and saying, post your picture on our Facebook wall. And then using that to grow virally and get more donations. A church, as soon as service is over, when the sermon sends a text message or the pastor sends a text message to all his congregation and he says, click here and ask me a question on our Facebook wall. And now he actually gets his participants to write on his wall and now all of their thousands of friends, now all of a sudden he's instantly reaching thousands of people in the community as they're seeing the conversation that he's having about his ministry with his parishioners. 
with his congregation. There's so many ways to take a mobile-first strategy and drive the conversation socially and to leverage what you can do socially. Obviously, our mobile coupons have social sharing uh, capabilities. We've talked about this, but it's a great way to be able to reach out to new customers. When you talk about new customer acquisition, new customer growth, what's the investment of bonusing your customers to share a coupon? The investment is very inexpensive. When you own, think of family fun places, think of any restaurant or whatever. When they're standing there in front of a customer, a retailer, they're standing there in front of a customer, they could easily give away a $5 t-shirt to them. Hey, we're giving away these free t-shirts. All you got to do is hit share on that uh, coupon that I gave you and then share that on social media. And if you get, you know, 10 people a day for each location you have to share your coupon and you incentivize them with a free t-shirt or a koozie or an appetizer that costs you nothing to make, right? You incentivize them to share a coupon. When you bonus them, for sharing a coupon, then their 220 friends see that you just posted a coupon and said, hey, dude, you should totally check this place out. Here's 10 free tokens, or here's a free appetizer coupon for you. And 10 people a day times 220 people is $2,200 a day of free social media impressions. And it's not totally free. You're incentivizing them. But some businesses you know, can do this and do it well. Obviously, it scales if you've got 10 locations, uh, or if you've got three locations and 10 people a day share it, times 220 is 6,600 free impressions, that the majority of those are going to be local impressions. How many new customers a day are you going to pick up? What's the value of that new person that you pick up? That's the mantra of this whole webinar, right? Email marketing translated to mobile, not super effective because, you know, you talk about um, – uh, because you talk about uh, you send an email out, you get a 20% open rate, you get a 1% click-through rate. It's actually less than 1% a lot of times. So they click here and register, they click here and register, and then they go to a page where they can fill out a form and you capture their mobile number. One out of 100. That's not very good. But it's something. It's better than zero out of 100. You know, uh, every swing you don't take or something, I don't know, there's something like that. You can also put it in the body of the copy, but I just thought I would mention it. Somebody asked me about that this morning, and it made me think about it. And my thought was very quick because it doesn't, it's not that effective. So, you know, I don't know. Um, mobilizing traditional marketing and uh, so traditional marketing. Traditional marketing has its place, whether it be direct mail, um, you know, print marketing, radio. you got to be able to get in front of people. Mobile doesn't work standing alone, but mobile does work. When you uh, send something out to targeted people and you say, hey, you want to see a video that really shows the benefits or you want to see a video of what our course is really like or you want to see, you know, whatever, text this word to this phone number and you can see it right in your hands. Um, when somebody says, uh, you know, wealth management updates sent right to your phone, how to be able to, uh, you know, save more money. It's not just mobile coupons, but it certainly works well with mobile coupons, right? Um, here's an example of a mobile coupon, right? That's what the coupon looked like before, and now it's changed, and that's what it looks like now. And now, instead of people looking at it, throwing it in a drawer, they text in, get the coupon right on their phone, now they're in your database, now you can remarket to those people, now you're bringing in new customers. Here's some other examples of people that mobilized their print campaigns, rallings, direct mail pieces, where the main call to action was text in to receive, you know, the uh, Ubaldo Jimenez uh, videos right to your phone, right? Um, display marketing, whether it be digital or outdoor displays, uh, television, in caps, whatever the display is, a mobile engagement right into the center of it, and then have the lead notifications go right to the sales team. And then pick up the phone and talk to those people and say, hey, I saw you texted in to see what the inside of our gym was like. Come in and, and uh, let's set a meeting and I'll take you through a tour and I'll give you a free week membership. Have your sales team follow up when people text in off the digital display. Now, is, it, is this investment, to put this up here, worth it? This investment is worth it if I'm capturing information from people, tracking that I'm actually getting conversions, and that I'm building up five new customers a day, I mean five new customers a month. 
five new customers a month doesn't sound like very much off a, off a display that costs me you know, 1000 a month or 500 a month or $1,200 a month to put this display up. But $1,200 a month is worth it if I'm bringing in five new customers a month that their lifetime value is worth $5,000 a piece. You see, you have to do that mathematics with somebody for them to understand the lifetime value of why, why would we add mobile to any of your engagement pieces? Because now you can actually track the value that you receive from it and then you can scale it. Let's talk about scale for a second because this is a very important piece of marketing investment. I can test something. So let's say that I think, okay, well maybe running an outdoor display might be worthwhile. I did it last year and I don't know if it really did anything, whatever, whatever. But now I'm going to put up an outdoor display. And this time I'm going to say, text this word to this phone number. I'm going to take these people that text in to my gym and I'm going to get a lead notification. I'm going to have my salespeople follow up with those leads. And I'm going to track those leads uh, <clears throat> and I'm going to remarket to those leads. And then I'm going to see how many people sign up to be a member at my gym. Now my gym costs $100 a month to be a part of the gym. And most people, their average lifetime value is four years. So the average, uh, the average person is worth $4,000 to me individually. Now, out of my first month of running this outdoor campaign, I had 45 leads, and I had three people convert to a new person. And that three people are worth $5,000 lifetime, so I brought in $15,000 of revenue. Now... 15, that's lifetime value. I didn't bring in first month revenue. My first month revenue was $300. It, my investment was $1,200 to do this plus the mobile piece. Is that scalable? Yes. If I've got the money, I'll put up two more displays and see if I get three conversions a piece because three times three is nine and nine times 5,000 is $45,000 of lifetime revenue off of a $3,600 investment. I'll do that all day long. And then I'll scale it to 10 displays and then I'll open up a new gym, right? This is how you start growing your business exponentially is by investing in something, tracking the results that you get and understanding the lifetime value of a new customer acquisition. Thinking about how lead acquisition strategies and following up with those leads with calls, text messaging, emails if you capture email, can be vitally important in helping you grow your business. I hope you guys all enjoyed this today. I'm including more resources here, just infographics and things like that about lifetime value and uh, of customers and things like that. You guys are welcome to look at any of these. Thank you, I'll stay on for any questions. Hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, tell me bye on your way out if you're leaving. Oh, why don't you write on our uh, Facebook wall today and uh, tell us what you thought of the webinar. I'm going to hit unrecord and then I'll answer some questions.